Hayward Chappelle. Good morning. Thank you. Please have a seat. Uh, I'm thankful for the opportunity to be with you today to share God's Word. This is going to be a little different, at least different for me. Perhaps it'll be a little different for you. I want to do something that perhaps will allow you to connect with God in your worship time a little bit more in your time of study. Uh, I feel a little bit vulnerable here because you're going to see a little bit about what happens from time to time in my living room or in my den or whatever the case may be. And I'm going to key off of a song. And I'll share, I'm just going to read the verse to you first so that you listen for it when we get into the song. Ties in with the manifestations, as always, we hear that. It's always a blessing. God spoke of his love and how much he loves us and how Jesus reaches out to us and draws us close with his warmth, that he never leaves or forsakes us, and that he wants us to reign in life, among other things, and that he wants us to have peace. Probably other things that you heard as well and hold fast to those, but the chorus of this song is Alleluia, Alleluia, I've been washed, brought near by the blood of the Lamb, Alleluia, Alleluia, and I will evermore reign with him. This is not a performance, it's perhaps what I might call worship movement, so let's play the song please.
It's a beautiful song. And I wanted to go through the, some of the lyrics with you a little bit because they inspire some of God's word to me. So the first part in the chorus is Alleluia. Alleluia. If you would put up Psalm 150, please. Praise ye the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in the firmament of his power. In the New Living Translation, it says, Praise him in his mighty heaven. God's heaven is full of might. When Jesus Christ taught his disciples to pray, he said, Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. That's our assignment is to bring heaven to earth, that people can see Jesus Christ in our lives. He went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil. And we've been given that power to do the same thing. Praise him for his mighty acts and praise him according to his excellent greatness. Anyone here think of a mighty act God has done in your life? Right? So you have some personal things to praise him for. Praise him with the sound of the trumpet. No, we don't have any trumpets in here today, but praise him with the psaltery and with the harp. Praise him with the timbrel and dance. Praise him with stringed instruments and organs. Praise him upon the loud cymbals. Praise him upon the high-sounding cymbals. Let everything that hath breath praise the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. This time of year is a wonderful time to think about that. When you get up in the morning, you hear those birds start to sing, and it reminds me there's a lot of things that are designed to give praise that maybe we don't even realize. Everything that has breath is more than just us. We do have breath, praise the Lord. But there's a lot of things that God designed to give praise to him. Psalm 47, verse 1, please. Oh, clap your hands, all ye people. That's not hard, right? Clap your hands, all ye people. Shout unto God with the voice of triumph. Hallelujah! Right. Praise the Lord. Psalm 63, verse 4. Thus will I bless thee, While I live, I will lift up my hands in thy name. We've got the name of our Father, Yahweh, Jehovah. We've also got the name of Jesus. We've got wonderful, beautiful names to lift up our hands, right? And it's not that hard. It may be a little different. It was a little uncomfortable for me when I first started it, but it's really not that hard. And I have to admit that there have been a lot of ball games that I've been to in one time or another when big things happen. I involuntarily go, yay! (laughs) Right? That happens. So why not with God? Lamentations 3.41. That one takes a little longer to find. There we go. Let us lift up our heart with our hands unto God in the heavens. Isn't that beautiful? So the first part of that chorus is hallelujah. See, hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's what God wants, is just to lift up our hearts to him. It can be with a group. It can be in your bathroom. It could be wherever you are. And after you start doing it a couple times, it's not, it, you feel a little more comfortable with it. Yeah. That next line is, I've been washed. I've been washed. I'd like to go to Titus chapter 3, verse, starting in verse 4. But after the kindness and love of God, our Savior toward man appeared. Not by works of righteousness which we have done, but according to his mercy he saved us by the washing of regeneration 
and renewing of the Holy Ghost, which he shed on us abundantly through Jesus Christ our Savior, that being justified by his grace, we should be made heirs according to the hope of eternal life. Can we put that up, Casey, please, in the passion, the type three, four? It, br it brings out something that's implied here. But after the kindness and love of God, our Savior toward man appeared. When the extraordinary compassion of God, our Savior, and his overpowering love suddenly appeared in person. In person. Who was that person? Jesus. Right. The kindness and love of God was ultimately manifested in a person. That person is Jesus Christ. All of his life and what he did for us is wrapped up in that. And the brightness, of, as the brightness of a dawning day, that's a beautiful image. He came to save us, not because of any virtuous deeds that we have done, but only because of his extravagant mercy. He saved us, resurrecting us through the washing of rebirth. We are made completely new by the Holy Spirit. That's a good point. We are new creations. It's not the old creation cleaned up. That's, old cre that's dead. The old man is dead. Not just washing up, making that old man a little better. It's dead. And we are new creations. We have a new creation. It's, it's God's spirit in us. And it looks like Jesus. Matter of fact, it says God is forming in us Jesus every day. More and more, we are growing up in him to be more like him. And yet God, in his wonderfully unique way, made Christ in you, Christ in you. So all of your little personality and quirks and all that stuff, he's not trying to make us all identical. He's trying to make us be who we can be with the fullness of Christ. In other words, he's happy about the uniqueness of who you are, and he wants to make the best of you in Christ. I don't know if I said that the right way, but that's, that's what he wants to make in you. Okay. He saved us through the resurrect, resurrecting us through the washing of the rebirth. We are made completely new by the Holy Spirit, whom he splashed over us richly. What a great picture. Yeah. By Jesus the Messiah, our life giver. Hallelujah. Is there another verse after that? So, as a gift of his love, and since we are faultless, innocent before his face, we can now become heirs of all things, all because of an overflowing hope of eternal life. That's powerful. Right. Right. I have been washed. I have been washed. Ephesians 5.25. King James is fine. Ephesians 5.25. Husbands, love your wives, even as also, even as Christ also loved the church, and gave himself for it, that he might sanctify and cleanse it by the washing of water by the word. The word of God washes us. The word of God cleans us. I heard someone put it this way, which I thought was very interesting. We don't, we have the blood of Jesus that cleanses us from all unrighteousness, but sometimes we haven't necessarily just sinned, but we Maybe we were around something that kind of made us feel funky. We don't feel quite right. The water of the word, when we go to that word, it can wash and clean us, even of that whatever stuff. We go out in the world and, you know, you come back and you just maybe just don't feel <laughs> unsettled or you heard conversations that took your mind somewhere. You come back to that word and that word just washes us. 
1 Corinthians 6, 11. And such were some of you, but you are washed, but you are sanctified, but you are justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of our God. This is all about that washing. And Revelation chapter 1, verse 5. And from Jesus Christ, who is the faithful witness and the first begotten of the dead and the prince of the kings of the earth, unto him that loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood. Hallelujah. So, hallelujah, hallelujah, we are washed, we're washed. That, to me, just a simple reminder. And then we are brought near. Ephesians 2, 13. But now, in Christ Jesus, ye who are sometimes far off. Anyone far off at one point? I think we all were. (laughs) Are made nigh by the blood of Christ. A lot about the blood here. Bringing us near. Washing us. For he is our peace, who hath made both one, and hath broken down the middle wall of partition between us, having abolished in his flesh the enmity, even the law of commandments contained in ordinances, for to make in himself of twain one new man, so making peace. We heard that in the manifestations, that we have that peace. And that he might reconcile both to God in one body by the cross, having slain the enmity thereby, that which kept you and I from God, was slain. And he came and preached peace to you who were far off and to them that are nigh. For through him we both have access by one spirit unto the Father. He made us brought near. We're washed. We're brought near. I don't know about you, but sometimes I don't feel near. I feel like because of something that I did or I wasn't, didn't read enough or didn't do this enough or maybe I should have spoken to that guy and I didn't do that, that somehow that distanced me from God or from Jesus. Um, I may feel that way, but that's not the case. We are brought near. We are washed. We are brought near by the blood of the Lamb. He paid for that. And sometimes we have to just remind ourselves of that. <laughs> I don't know if you've ever been in a room, a dark room, with other people that you know, but all of a sudden the lights go out and you start to freak out. And you're not really sure what happened. Is anybody there? But the person that was with you says, I'm right here. I'm right here. And you reach out and you touch them. Sometimes in our own minds we feel like we're in the darkness and Jesus is standing right there. I'm right here. He didn't exit, you know, it wasn't like the lights went off and he said, good chance for me to get out of here. (laughs) He's right there. He hadn't gone anywhere. He is right there and maybe that's the best time for us to reach out to him because we need that. We feel in the darkness. He's right there. And we have access to our Heavenly Father because of him. That veil of the temple was torn. Ephesians 3.12 talking about in Christ Jesus, in whom we have boldness and access with what? Confidence. Confidence. We have boldness and access with confidence by the faith of him. We can be bold. It says in Hebrews that we can come boldly unto the throne of grace to obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need, right? That's what God wants us to do, like a little child who just comes to their 
parrots and says, I need such and such, and they're right there. You know, we do whatever. That's how God wants us to be with him. So, hallelujah, right? Hallelujah. I've been washed, brought near, brought near. Sometimes that's, I want to feel that. And that's my prayer. I want to feel. I never was really taught. Well, it was going back a few years. I've been taught it since then. But I'm not, I wasn't taught that I can really feel the presence of God or the presence of Jesus. And I know some people feel that more than I do at times. Well, that's my prayer. I want to feel it. There are times I just want to feel hugged. Yeah. Whatever, you know. <laughs> um, that's what God wants us to do. I think it was, I know it was in one of the manifestations about that loving warmth of Jesus drawing us closer to him. And then it says, hallelujah, hallelujah again. Oh, I'm sorry, I jumped off. I don't want to miss the blood of the lamb. So I've been washed, brought near by the blood of the lamb. We've already seen that, but let's go to Hebrews chapter 10. Verse 19. We'll look at this in two versions. King James, having therefore, brethren, boldness to enter into the holiest by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way, which he hath consecrated for us through the veil, that is to say, his flesh, and having a high priest over the house of God, let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith. That's the confidence again. Having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. That gets it all right in there. All the things that we're seeing right there. Can we put this up in the, in the Passion, starting with verse 19? The boldness, the access, the washing all because of what Jesus did. <clears throat> and now, we are brothers and sisters in God's family because of the blood of Jesus. And he welcomes us to come into the most holy sanctuary in the heavenly realm boldly and without hesitation. I don't know about you, but I have to remind myself of this. Boldly and without hesitation. That's how our Father wants us to come. For he has dedicated a new life-giving way. What's that? <coughs> Jesus, who said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. The true and living way. He has dedicated a new life-giving way for us to approach God. For just as the veil was torn in two, Jesus' body was torn open to give us free and fresh access to him. And since we now have a magnificent high priest to welcome us, that's a good picture, welcoming us into God's house. Not a legalistic high priest making sure we've done everything before you can get in. Not an evil gatekeeper. A welcoming high priest to welcome us into God's house, we come closer to God and approach him with an open heart, fully convinced that nothing will keep us at a distance from him. For our hearts have been sprinkled with blood to remove impurity. And that goes back to the whole sprinkling Moses did and then the the tabernacle, I mean the doorpost and all of that, this is much better than all that. Our hearts have been sprinkled with blood to remove all impurity. That's beautiful, isn't it? So, so that's hallelujah, hallelujah, I've been washed, brought near by the blood of the Lamb for what he did on the cross. Yeah? Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah again, and I shall evermore reign with him. Ephesians 2, 6. And hath raised us up together 
This is what God did. He raised us up together and he made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. He raised us up. That's where we are. We are seated in the heavenlies. 2 Timothy 2, verse 11. It is a faithful saying. If we be dead with him, we shall also, what? Live with him. If we suffer, we shall also reign with him. That is what we do. We reign with him. Romans chapter 5, verse 17. For if by one man's offense, that's Adam, death reigned by one, much more they which receive abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness shall reign in life by one, Jesus Christ. Amen? That's it. God wants us to reign evermore. And Revelation chapter 5 Verse 9. And they sung a new song, saying, Thou art worthy, talking about Jesus, to take the book and to open the seals thereof. You read that chapter, it's this book, and everybody was starting to despair because nobody was worthy to open it. And then, I, I don't know if it was an angel or elders or somebody says, Wait, nope, there is one. There is one worthy, that's Jesus, to open the seals thereof, for thou wast slain and hast redeemed us to God by thy blood out of every kindred and tongue and people and nation. That's awesome to think about that. Every kingdom, every tongue, every people, and every nation. God's vision is much bigger than sometimes we see it. He is working to reach everybody everywhere that all men could be saved, at least have that opportunity to come to a knowledge of the truth. And has made us unto our God kings and priests, and we shall, what? Reign on earth. And then Revelation 22, verse 5. And there shall be no night there, and they need no candle. This is the new heaven and earth, I believe. Neither light of the sun, for the Lord God giveth them light, and they shall reign forever and ever. <laughs> there you go. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I've been washed. I've been brought near by the blood of the Lamb. Hallelujah, hallelujah. And I, I evermore shall reign with him. Amen? Amen. Amen. Yes. So will you join me in this? Let's do that song again. Just relax. This is, as I said, it's not a performance spread out a little bit, but I think God will just enjoy your heart to him. Take deep breaths. Think of the things that God has delivered you from and how he wants to draw you near. Yeah. Night darkness. He turns on the light and says, I'm right here with you. Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus.
about it relating to you. You have been brought near. You have been washed. Let anything of this day or this week just go. go. So let me stay here, right in your face. love you so much. We're so thankful for what you did and what you continue to do for us in Christ Jesus. We praise you for your goodness. We praise you for your wonderful works. Help us to just draw near to you, to receive what you've already done. Wash away any obstacles. Blast them out of our lives, Father. We can receive that forgiveness that we already have. We love you. We praise you. Thank you that you have washed us. And right now, you continue to wash us. We thank you for the word that cleanses us. We thank you, Father, that you have brought us near. Help us to feel it, to feel it, to feel you personally. I don't know everybody else, but you do. You you know what each one of us wants, Father. You know how each one of us wants to just be so sure in our hearts that you are with us in every situation. So thank you for making it real in our hearts that we have been brought near and we have that access. Thank you, God, for the reality of the hope that Jesus is coming back and that we will reign with him. And that, Father, you are building and reaching out to make a wonderful body all around the world, every kindred, every tongue, every tribe. That, Father, bless everyone who reaches out in Jesus' name. Signs, miracles, and wonders following their footsteps and ours. May this week be the greatest and sweetest week of fellowship with you and with your Son and the greatest week of reaching out with your love. We give you honor and praise in the wonderful name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. God bless you all. Amen. Thank you all very much. God bless you.